Good morning and welcome to another episode of Unscripted and Unchained RPG Review. I am DM Bloodworth and as you can see by the graphics, uh, today's video I am going to be uh, taking my second look at uh, Nave 2nd Edition by Ben Milton, who's uh, the Questing Beast uh, YouTube channel. And uh, today I'm going to be focusing on uh, character generation. So uh, another shout out to uh, Ben Milton for, you know, creating such a... Uh, a very easy uh, game system to jump right into and then all of the various tools that uh, you can use the uh, use within Nave second edition are so transferable to other game systems as well uh, it really really is uh, a, a very useful addition to my uh, to my collection and uh, it's certainly something that I will be using uh, probably frequently uh, as I am uh, either coming up with ideas for uh, adventures in other game systems or um, actually running Nave 2nd Edition at, uh, at, in a convention space. So certainly looking to develop some, uh, you know, some three-hour one-shot adventures using Nave 2nd Edition uh, just to really test out the system as well. So... Without further ado, let's start taking a look at character generation. And I am going to switch views here and take us right into this. Now I'm going to enlarge this so you can see. Uh, now I am using, you know, I really do prefer this landscape uh, version of it. So if I were ever to print this out while I'm waiting for my you know, uh, hardcover copy to come in, um, I would print this out in landscape because it's just much more useful in this format. So I am going to enlarge it. So ability scores. PCs have six ability score, uh, abilities with scores rated from 0 to 10 to, uh, to add to checks. See page 7. So strength, uh, the fighter ability... Uh, add to melee attacks and checks requiring power like climbing and lifting. Dexterity, the thief ability. Constitution, the adventurer ability. Uh, important for every PC. Added to checks to resist poison, cold, etc. PCs have 10 plus con item slots and can, and can take 10 plus con wounds before dying. Intelligence is the magic user ability. Um, it will probably give you, so let's see, add to checks requiring cunning like lock picking, alchemy, etc. Uh, intelligence improves the effectiveness of spells and PCs and can cast, uh, can cast intel spells per day. All right, so your intelligence scores, you know, plus, whatever the pluses are, you can cast those per day. Uh, wisdom is the ranger ability added to ranged attacks and checks requiring perception and willpower like foraging, navigating, and resisting spells. Charisma is a cleric ability added to checks requiring force for personality like initiative and persuasion. PCs can have a number of companions and patrons, uh, patron blessings equal to their charisma. Record ability scores. Distribute three points between your character, uh, your PC's ability scores. More than one point can be added in the same score. Or let fate decide by rolling three d6. With each die adding one, uh, one to an ability score matching the number it rolls. So, for example, if you roll a three five five means that Constitution, the third ability, is 1, and Wisdom, the fifth ability, is 2. All other abilities have a score of 0. Um, I would probably much rather just put a point in where I want it, but uh, yeah, if you like randomized, that's a good way to go. Recording secondary stats. PC start at level 1 with 0 XP. They can they have 10 plus con item slots and d6 starting at maximum hit points all right um so 
you can either roll that d6 or for first level you can just say they start off with uh, six hit points. Uh, I would probably go that route more so. Record careers. Roll or pick two careers from the list on the page. You gain those careers items as well as any of the following that you can carry. You can carry up to 3d6 times 10 coins, two rations, a 50-foot rope, two torches, any armor piece or weapon, and a quiver of 20 arrows. If the PC has any points in intelligence, they may receive a random spell book. Uh, see pages 22 to 25 for each point. Armor. PCs have armor points, AP, equal to their number of armor pieces and the armor class AC equal to AP plus 11. Finishing touches. Name and describe your character using the tables on page 54 through 59 if you need ideas. So here's some of the careers, right? So I'm not going to go through this entire list here. But um, an acolyte will start with a candlestick, a censer, and an uh, incense. An acrobat will have flash powder, balls. Uh, I'm assuming that's uh, balls for juggling. And uh, lamp oil, or maybe they're for something else. So I'm not quite sure. Um, an actor will have a wig, makeup, and costume. Let's find something else here. Um, a pirate. We'll have a sextant, a cannonball, and a grappling hook. I don't know why they would start with a single cannonball. Kind of weird. Uh, so looking through some of these others, let's say a scout will have uh, a signal flare, uh, single flag, sorry, black grease and dice. A tailor will have, kind of makes sense here, sewing kit, scissors, and soap. Not quite sure why the soap is in there. So each one has like things that they will start off with, little items that they will start off with. Um, and usually with just like one kind of very random thing here. So a gambler would have a rapier, a card deck, and dice. The rapier is, you know, uh, the one thing that kind of stands out as being an odd match, but the rest makes sense. So um, interesting. And a 100 is a woodcutter axe, firewood, and 50 feet of rope. So uh, continuing on with creating characters, we're going to go on to item slots and wounds. So slots PCs have 10 plus con item slots to record their gear. Most items, including groups of small items that can fit in one hand, take up one slot. Two-handed items take two slots. 500 coins uses a full slot. Damage a PC receives his uh, receives is subtracted from the HP. Once the HP reaches zero, each point of damage fills an item slot with an appropriate wound. Stabbed, frozen, burned from the highest slot to the lowest items in the wound slot must be dropped. All right, so uh, that's that's kind of interesting, right? So it's like the, the more wounds you take uh, below zero, the less items that you can carry. It kind of shows that your, your constitution is dropping uh, and you can no longer carry as much stuff. I don't know how you're still functioning uh, at below zero hit points, but we'll, we'll continue reading through. Direct damage. Direct damage bypasses hit points and adds wounds directly. This occurs in situations where a creature's combat skills would not protect them. When falling or attacked unawares, monsters receive triple damage from direct damage since they do not have item slots. All right, that's interesting. Death. PC dies when all of their slots are filled with wounds. Creatures without slots, like monsters, simply die at zero hit points. Healing. PCs HP return to maximum each morning as long as they slept for two watches and ate a meal the night before. If they are in a safe haven, they also heal one wound. 
Leveling up. Experience points. PCs are awarded one experience point for each coin worth of treasure recovered from remote dangerous locations like dungeons and returned to civilizations, split evenly between all PCs who assisted. If you are using a pre-made dungeon from another RPG that uses copper, silver, electrum, gold, and platinum coins, then convert the total to gold coins and gain that much XP. Leveling up. At certain XP thresholds, PCs gain a level which adds one to three different ability scores. Do not reset XP to zero. The three scores can be picked by the player or chosen randomly. Each level also allows the player to re-roll their PC's HP maximum using one additional D6. If the roll total is not greater than their last maximum, add one point to the maximum. All right. Um, hmm. So there might be a disadvantage then looking at that to having them start out with a um, with a D6 uh, and, and having them start out with a, uh, a maximum hit points of six. Uh, it will kind of slow them down. Um, really, the best would be to roll a five and then a six. And then that way, which adds three different ability scores. So, um, so at certain XP thresholds, PCs gain a level, which adds one to three different ability scores. Do not reset XP to zero. The three scores can be picked by the player or chosen randomly. Each level also allows a player to re-roll their PC's HP maximum using one additional D6. If the total, if the roll total is not greater than their maximum, add one point to their maximum. Okay, so, um, interesting um yeah i don't know if i don't know if it's a detriment then to start them off with uh maximum hit points at first level checks when a creature attempts something risky they make a check by rolling a d20 and adding one of their ability scores if their total meets or exceeds a target number set by the gm they succeed if the creature doesn't have ability scores, the GM can use its level, uh, half its level or zero, based on how good it is at the task. GM should not call for checks for situations that would be solved with critical thinking. Some actions may be impossible unless the PC has the proper tools or careers. Setting the target number, start with an 11, and then add difficulty rating from 0 to 10, 5 by default. If the check is against another creature, the difficulty rating is equal to their relevant ability score or level. In an attack, the difficulty is the defender's armor points. The target number of 11 plus AP is called armor class. Reversing checks. It is possible to have a player do all of the rolling by reversing checks and the GM usually the GM usually makes. Example, a goblin trying to strike a PC could add its level to the D20 trying to hit the PC's armor class, 11 plus the PC's armor points. Or, to reverse the roll, the PC could add their armor points to a D10 aiming for the target number of 11 plus the goblins level. Um, so basically you could have the players roll for the monster's attack on the players, um, taking, I guess, the rolling out of the hands of the GM. Another interesting thing. Um, modifiers, the, the GM can apply a minus five penalty for each 
disadvantage and a plus five bonus for each advantage that the rolling player has on check. Uh, related career, a clever approach, extra time, and the right tools um, would add a uh, advantage. Social checks. In most cases, the outcome of social interactions can be resolved with common sense and role playing, but in a risky situation, the GM may call for a check. These are made using the PC's charisma versus the NPC's wisdom or charisma, depending on the context. Modifiers may be applied based on the target's disposition and the relationship to the PC. Factional or moral alignment, the PC's phrasing, bribes, threats, etc. Low lore checks. Checks are not necessary for the PC to recall lore. PCs automatically know all common knowledge and any specialized knowledge covered by their careers. Any other knowledge must be discovered in-game. Search checks. Hidden things are either automatically discovered after enough time is spent searching, usually 10 minutes for dungeon rooms or a full watch for wilderness hexes, or they cannot be found without taking in-game actions. Obvious features of an area should be described right away to the PCs, and details should be described as players ask questions and investigate. All right, so I'm going to leave it there. That's more of a gameplay. Uh, that page is more of gameplay, but it explains how a character uh, how a character she works, and so I include that in uh, character creation and such. So I'm going to switch back on views here. So you can see there's there's some you know very interesting new ways of looking at uh, a character's abilities to do certain things, and and I like some of those um, those comparisons, like charisma is versus will uh, wisdom. Uh, which makes a lot of sense, right? Because if you're if you're trying to convince somebody of something, or you're trying to intimidate them, or whatever, you're using your charisma in order to do that, and then they're using their wisdom in order to defend from it. So, like, I kind of like that social interaction way of looking at it, and um, you know, and I think it's important to um, you know to value. Uh, those typical areas that that oftentimes are uh, dump dump attributes uh, for for players when they're rolling up their characters. So um, you know, so kudos there in in, in adding a little bit more um, more importance to some of those areas that are oftentimes neglected. Uh, so. Um, so far, so good. I mean, I'm really enjoying, you know, reading through this. You're getting this in real time, right? That that was the first time I'm reading through those pages there. And, um, you know, and, and you can see that it's, it, even in the, in the one case where it wasn't immediately understandable uh, to me, you know, on the second or even the third read, I started to actually understand it better. And that's not an indicator that the system is not um, is is not good or it's not um, you know easy to understand. It's just introducing a new concept, and um, you know which is almost always a, a positive uh, to introduce new concepts, and it just takes a few moments. To actually piece it together and, and get it but uh, if someone else read those passages you know as well and um, you know and came to a different conclusion than what I did please feel free to jump in the comments section and you know straighten that out um, I mean if the questing beast came in here you know if Ben Milton himself came in here and said hey no this is the the way that it's uh, you know, you're supposed to interpret this, that would be even better. Uh, so that would be really cool. Uh, and I'd love to, you know, talk with him about, uh, you know, about Nave Second Edition and get a little bit more uh, detail as to, 
you know, some of the reasoning behind why he picked certain stats, uh, you know, at least to, to state why. Like, so, like, I get why Constitution is going to be used for your carrying capacity because it's, a, it's an effect of endurance, um, you know, rather than strength, which you would typically are uh, related to. So I get that, that, you know, um, it doesn't really need to be written out, but uh, it would certainly be nice to, you know, to actually hear it that way uh, said that, you know, well, constitution is a reflection of endurance and that's why it affects carrying capacity. Um, maybe a new gamer might not actually piece that together, um, you know, as I had on the first read as well. So um, I hope you enjoyed this video. And uh, again, if you have also picked up Nave Second Edition and you're starting to, uh, you know, tear through it as well, uh, please feel free to jump in the comments section and I'd love to have conversations about this. Uh, and again, if you disagree with me on, on a way that I interpreted a rule or whatnot, you know, feel free to jump in there and say, no, no, this is how you should be looking at it. And then when I take a, a second or a third look at it, you know, uh, perhaps I will, you know, agree with you and, and uh, modify how I'm looking at it and how I would use it in the future. So, um, Thanks always for joining in. Uh, I hope your um, I, I hope you're enjoyed your past uh, holiday uh, break. And uh, as you can see behind me, I have my you know my my primary Christmas present on that side that I am I finished putting uh, putting together yesterday with great help from my my younger daughter Sophia. So uh, you know, great thanks to her because. Uh, Without her help of handing me various tools or little screws or whatever, uh, it would have taken much, much longer to actually put this thing together. And as you can see, I am already filling in those slots and, and kind of reorganizing how I had everything behind me there. Um, by far a great, great uh, Christmas present to have received. Uh, and... Uh, you know, now I'm going to see if I can convince my wife to move our wedding picture over to the other wall. Um, and uh, then I will move uh, Conan's, Conan's father's sword from the wall where you can see it right there behind me. Be kind of like the sword of Damocles rising you know, over my head. But, um, you know, I think that's a perfect spot for the sword to go and I'll kind of really capture the look that I'm looking for behind me. Uh, so yeah, you will see that slowly fill up and, uh, you know, over the next couple of days and everything. This weekend I am going to, uh, going to the Philadelphia Game Expo. Uh, so that is, you know, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. So I will, um, I will try to record from there. I'll do little um, little, you know, possibly interviews, little recaps and such. I'll see how much I can actually, uh, do while, you know, offsite, um, probably do a lot of shorts. So that's something that you can look forward to over the, uh, you know, Friday, Saturday and Sunday weekend. Um, also anticipating some snow. And so hopefully I don't get trapped in Philadelphia and I'm able to get home, by uh, Sunday afternoon, but uh, we will wait and see. So yes, be on the lookout for a whole bunch of shorts, uh, you know, short videos during the weekend, as well as uh, tonight I am doing a live stream at 8 p.m., 8.15 uh, p.m. Uh, Eastern Time. Uh, I'm going to be doing a recap of our Castles and Crusades episode this uh, past Tuesday night. And, uh, and, and talk about some other things as well. I read a recent, um, e either yesterday, I believe, um, Ben, Ben, uh, Riggs, uh, the writer of Slaying the Dragon, which was like a history of, uh, TSR. Um, you know, he had a very, very provocative, uh, you know, take on uh, on the hobby and, and the state of the hobby going forward. And, and so I'm probably going
going to do some discussion on that uh, tonight. I might even handle it in a, uh, a separate video uh, following up on this video here uh, sometime either today or tomorrow morning after our discussion tonight on the live stream. So um, look forward to having you drop in during the live stream at 8.15 p.m. Eastern Time uh, you know, tonight again for a recap and uh, and a little bit of talk about the the hobby going forward uh, based on that article or that uh, that long Facebook post that Ben Riggs put up there. So you have a great day. Take care. St thanks for stopping in.